Spill the beans, man. What happened last week? Why couldn't people buy the GameStop shares? Basically, Wednesday of last week at 3.30 a.m. Pacific, our operations team receives a file from the NSCC, which is the National Securities Clearing Corporation. The request was around $3 billion, which is an order of magnitude more than what it typically is. Why and was that so high? Like, this seems like, sounds like this is an unprecedented increase in uh, demand for capital. What formula did they use to calculate that? We don't have the full details. It's a little bit of an opaque formula, but there's a component called the VAR that's based on kind of some fairly quantitative things, although it's not fully transparent. So there are ways to reverse engineer it, but it's not publicly shared. And then there's a special component, which is discretionary. So that's that kind of acts as a multiplier, basically. It's discretionary, discretionary meaning like it's just their opinion. Yeah, there. Uh, it's it's a little bit. I mean, I'm sure there's there's definitely more more than just their opinion, but um, basically, well, I mean, I, I guess like it's what based everyone, on growth. What everyone wants to know. What everyone wants to know is like, did something maybe shady go down here? Like, like it, it's like it seems weird that you'd get a sudden ten billion dollar demand. You know, three billion, three, three billion in the morning. Sorry, how much? It was three billion U.S. dollars. Three billion. Okay, so three billion yeah, around. You know, just suddenly out of nowhere. I wouldn't impute shadiness to it or anything like okay. that. The NSCC was reasonable subsequent to this, and they worked with us to actually lower it. We don't. I don't have the full context about what's going on in the in the NSCC to make these calculations. We put our heads together. Chief Operating Officer basically said, "Look, let's call up the higher ups at the NSCC and kind of." figure out what's going on. Maybe there's some way we can work with them. Basically, there was another call and they lowered it to something like $1.4 billion from three. And then we basically proposed, well, let's explain how you know we'll manage risk in these symbols throughout the day. We proposed marking these volatile stocks that were driving the activity position closing only. And then at about an hour before market open, so 5.30 or 5 in the morning, they came back and they said, okay, the deposit's 700 million, which we then deposited and paid promptly. And then everything was fine. So that okay. essentially explains why we had to mark these symbols position closing only. But we had no choice in this case. We had to conform to our regulatory capital requirements. And so the team did uh, did what they could to make sure we were available for customers. Who controls this, this, this organization, this clearinghouse? So it's, it's a consortium. It's, it's not quite a government agency. I don't really know the details of all of that. Okay. But we got a lot of questions about, okay, you had to restrict buying. Why didn't you also restrict selling? Yeah. People get really pissed off if they're holding stock and they want to sell it and they can't, right? So I think that's, that's categorically worse. And lots of other brokers, I think, were in the same situation. Robinhood was in the news, but you, you sort of heard this industry-wide, right? Other brokers restricted the same exact activity. All right. So, so it sounds like this, this, this organization you know, calls you up and they basically have a gun to your head. Either hand over this money or, or else. And so, because I mean, like basically what people are wondering is like, did, did you sell your clients down the river or do you have no choice? And if you had no choice, that's understandable. But then, you know, we gotta find out why you had no choice and who are these people that are saying you have no choice? I think that's fair. You know, we have to comply with these requirements. Financial institutions have requirements. The, the formula behind these requirements, I think it would obviously be ideal if there was a little bit more transparency so we could plan better around that, you know, but 24 hours later, our team raised over a billion dollars in capital so that when we do open tomorrow morning, we'll be able to kind of relax the stringent position limits that we put on these securities on Friday. Will, will there be any limits? We don't have infinite capital, right? <laughs> and on Friday, there were limits. There's always going to have to be some limit. If someone were to deposit a hundred billion dollars and, and decide to trade in one stock like that, that wouldn't be possible. I guess people really just want to know, you know, if you had no choice, then then you had no choice. Uh, it's gun to head situation. Then that's understandable. Uh, but then whoever put that gun to your head should, you know, be willing to answer <laughs> to the public. Yeah, listen, there's processes. This is unprecedented times. And Robin is a participant in the financial system. Um, so we have to work with all of these counterparties. So we do get a lot of questions about, you know, 
Why do you work with market makers? Why do you work with clearing houses? The financial system that allows customers to trade shares is sort of a complex web of multiple parties. Everyone says oh, it could be better, it could be improved. It's just the necessity of, of trading equities in the US. I mean, to what degree are you beholden to Citadel? I mean, like, like basically, if Citadel is unhappy, then I, I, what, then what happens? You know, there was a rumor that Citadel uh, or other market makers kind of pressured us into doing this. And now that, that's just false. Market makers execute our trades. They execute trades of, of every broker dealer. You know, this was, this was a clearing house um, this was a clearinghouse decision, and it was just based on the capital requirements. Okay. From our perspective, you know, Citadel and other market makers weren't involved in that. But wouldn't they have a strong say in, in who got put in charge of that organization since it's an industry consortium, not a government consortium or not a government regulatory agency? Um, I, I don't have any reason to believe that. I think that's just like... You know, then you're getting into kind of the conspiracy theories a little bit. So I just have no no reason to believe that that's the case. You know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, um, I guess uh, so we'll see what happens with future actions.